Welcome to Chief Central Radio Show. And now your hosts, Jason Seibel and Chris Kilduff. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Chiefs fans. You are listening to Chiefs Central Radio on the Pro Football Central Radio Network. As always, I'm your host, Jason Seibel, down in San Antonio, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good friend, my buddy, my partner in crime, Chris Kilduff. What's up, Chris? Not much. Just, uh, you know, getting used to getting football every week. I, I'm, You know, you, you go on that sabbatical with no football for so long, and now it's hitting you in every direction. I'm getting excited about that. I know it's it's nice to turn on NFL Network and actually have games on instead of like top tening everything to the infinite degree. Yeah, top ten Dave Craig fumbles. <laughs> that's what we get. That's what we get up here up in Spokane. Yeah, top. T- <laughs> they can do, they can do a top four hundred Dave Craig fumbles. It's like it's funny, man. It's you know, it, it's so true. It's like literally in the off season, they top ten everything. I always get excited in the off season when they start the um, the top one hundred players of the previous year because it's yeah. a ten it's a ten week show and it takes you right up to training camp. It's so nice and and here we are. And actually, training camp's almost over as we record this episode. It's Tuesday evening. Um, and going into uh, you know Wednesday, Thursday is actually the Chiefs' last practice in uh, at St. Joe. Uh, training camp is over. Of course, they they're off Friday and Saturday um, as they will play Sunday in Carolina against the Panthers on national television. It'll actually be on Fox for everyone to enjoy, um, which is pretty cool that they get a nationally televised game um, for preseason. So it's actually like their fourth or fifth national televised game for the week or for the year. Or so. Um, pretty cool stuff, but uh, yeah, training camp's coming to an end, but before we talk about the Panthers, before we talk about what's going on this weekend, um, you know, we kind of get into what we uh, what we normally do on this show, which is, uh, you know, we always discuss the game that was, and the Chiefs had a game last week. <laughs> it, it was preseason, um, you know, a lot of second and third and fourth stringers playing. Uh, but it was preseason. Chris, you got a chance to catch it the, the following morning, Friday morning, which a lot of folks did when they replayed it on NFL Network. Um, what'd you think, man? I mean, wh- how'd you think the boys looked? You know, I, I think you can't complain. I mean, for a preseason game, I think we did what we needed to do was cycle through some players, show that we can put some points on the board. I mean, that's generally my biggest concern with the Chiefs a lot of the time is – there's nothing that ticks me off than getting in the red zone and not scoring points. So, um, you know, last year, you know, was a year where we did that decent. Um, I think we could do it better. You know, luckily we had Jamal Charles who fronted, you know, that entire attack the the whole year. But um, it was really nice to see, you know, we had spoke last week about, you know, the three players who you really wanted to see have a breakout game and see that the hype is there. And I felt the three that I named did that. You know, I, I said D'Anthony Thomas. We had the amazing D'Anthony Thomas run. I think, you know, that's the thing. I think it got voted best play in preseason so for, you know, in the, for the first week. And then um, Travis Kelsey had the long touchdown um, where we got to see him in the open field. And then um, I thought the O-line all held together, you know, fairly decently. So I, that's... that's kind of made me happy. Yeah, uh, you know, let's, uh, obviously the first thing in, in that we need to break down and we need to talk about is that DeAnthony Thomas run because off the bat, preseason game one, here's this kid that everybody is like, this kid is going to be a difference maker on this team. And special teams, you know, re- kind of reset in that for a second, that thought. Special teams is extremely important to this Chiefs football team the way that it's designed. It was very important last year, and I think it's going to be very important this year. And what I mean by that is the field position game. This team, in my opinion, is not built for a 95, 90, 85-yard drive. Um, they, they're, too, they're too young. Uh, they haven't quite gelled together yet, and, and they make those, those little mistakes that have a tendency to, to bring those, those long drives to a screeching halt. And I think that we've seen that when they don't get good field position to start a drive. Um, they can do it, and I'm not saying that they're incapable of doing it, but this team is much, much better 
when it only has 50, 45, 40 yards to go to the end zone. Of course, any team would be, but this team seems to be built on that. It's more of a quick, fast, let's get in the end zone. So, you know, here's a guy in DeAnthony Thomas that has the ability, and and not just DeAnthony Thomas, but Albert Wilson who had that big uh, kick yeah. return. First kick return, yeah. Yeah, 60, 65 yards I think is what he went, plus a 15-yard um, unnecessary roughness penalty for the late hit out of bounds. So you're talking an 80-yard return. Um you know, I mean, they've got two guys now already in preseason game one who are who are primed to kind of pick right up where they left off. But breaking down that DeAnthony Thomas touchdown, you know, I, I've I've watched it incessantly. I mean, to the point of almost obsession, just to kind of see how he did it. And it's amazing to me because he gets hit by. His own player, Chris Owens, runs into him, and then the the Bengals player runs into him, and he bounces off both of those guys. I mean, that ball, by all rights, probably should have been fair caught. Um, that they were right on top of him, and then just that speed that he shows as he comes around, finds that crease, and away he goes. It, it was something else, man. It really, really was. Yeah, and if you see a lot of his stuff at Oregon, it's the same way that he's that type of runner where. If you get that guy a crease, man, he sees the opening and just really takes after it. And uh, it's really impressive to yeah, watch. If you watch the second half of that play and just see the breakaway speed, you know, everyone's running full speed and he looks like he's in fast forward. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you and I have talked about him in depth. Of course, you being a Northwest, um, you know, Pacific Northwest guy and having really kind of seen this guy develop while he played at Oregon. Um, and for me, he was kind of an unknown when he was drafted by the Chiefs. There it is again. I've got the replay up as he <laughs> as he comes around and then cuts it upfield. I mean, you're not kidding. I mean, they're running at full speed, and he is just moving away from them. Uh, it's beautiful. But uh, but yeah, and all the highlight stuff that I uh, it, with all the highlight stuff that I uh, saw of him, you know, it's like that breakaway speed it's just it is absolutely amazing to me how he he has the ability to just um you know just break out and take off it's it's crazy yeah and uh you know it really matters too i think a lot of the time you get the runners and there's so much shine you know people like anthony thomas are just getting so much you know uh foreseeing that but the blocking you see there is done really well too um you know a lot of those guys don't get a lot of the same hype that you get from the runners but um some of the um ceiling that's going on in the blocking there to kind of create that hole uh, a lot of the times you get you know plays like that that are kind of blown up a little bit just because of the contact right after the catch and so people get off their lanes but um you know the Chiefs all last year did a very good job in that blocking, and I, I think that's really what opened up a lot of the uh, returns that we, you know, being we were the number one rated team for kickoff and punt returns last year. So I, I think we're going to continue with that. Yeah, I, I think we are too. You know, and it's funny that you talk about the blocking in watching that uh, that kick return. The guy that was running right down the field with uh, with the Anthony Thomas the entire way was number one uh, Chiefs draft pick D Ford. Ford, yeah. Uh, uh, he granted it was just the punter that he was blocking, but <laughs> I mean yeah, that's fair. D Ford versus punter, yeah. <laughs> D, but but a but a punter can knock uh, knock the Anthony Thomas's little butt out of bounds as good as oh, anybody. Yeah. So oh yeah, and you know you know speaking of punters, you know special teams, you know I mean that's. Across the board, our special teams, you know, I, I think, um, you know, we've had a, a couple great kickers. I mean, it showed in that game, too. Um, you know, I, I think that in all facets of special teams, I think we're looking really, really good to use our special teams to be a force for us again this year. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely think that they're definitely they're on the right track for sure with special teams. Of course, uh, the the next player that you talked about in, in that um, in that trio of players that you wanted to watch was Travis Kelsey, and you know he he had one I think one or two games in preseason last year before he banged that knee, uh, ended up having a microfracture, uh, undergoing microfracture surgery, which 
doesn't sound horrible to, I guess, the layman, but I guess it's pretty significant as far as an injury goes. I didn't realize quite how how bad it was as an injury, but you know there were concerns about him even coming back and making an impact this year. But I, I think he kind of put that those those fears to rest. Uh, you know, when you know, a guy that big can move like that, I'll tell you what. Well, I mean, that's, he's a big dude. I mean, I'm I'm six four two fifty. And so I look at him, he's 6'5", 250, 260, and I'm like, there's no way that I'm outrunning an entire professional football secondary. I mean, that's, that's impressive. I mean, in pads and everything else, I mean, he, you know, he showed that burst that a lot of us had seen from him watching you know, college highlight stuff when he was drafted by the Chiefs last year. And really, he's kind of having his rookie year this year, uh, being that he spent the entire season last year in IR. Um, yeah, what a... What a catch and run, 69 yards. I mean, in the, I think the ball only was in the air probably about 10, 10, 12 yards, so it wasn't like, um, you know, it wasn't like it was a deep pass from Chase Daniel. Uh, you know, it was all him. It was all him. Now, did you did you do the same thing I did when he made that little dive into the end zone? Did you cringe? Yes, I was <laughs> like, I was like, how can you come off of an injury and then do that to us? I, I almost uh, do that anytime anybody does that, though. I'm just like, oh, come on. I know. Well, I, I watched it live, man, and, and I mean, my heart stopped. It was just like, oh, I, all I could just see was him landing wrong on that little <laughs> hot dog dive into the you end. Know, it always so. reminds me of uh, the season the Bucks. I think it might have been the season they went to the Super Bowl, but they had Martin Gramatica as their kicker, mm-hmm. and he did, he did like the, after he kicked the field goal, he did like the little Ryu and Street Fighter jumping uppercut move and busted his ankle. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. But, you know, it's funny. Uh, last week we talked about our favorite football movie, and uh, in that, you know, John Madden was in the movie or The Replacements, and he says, never do something great if you can't handle the congratulations or the celebration or whatever. So there you no. go. Don't don't celebrate if, you're, uh, if your body can't handle it. So, yeah, um, we've, been, we've been, I mean, we've had some minor injury stuff, but, you know, man, we... That would sure be brutal to lose, you know, somebody big again already. Yeah, uh, the the Chiefs have actually been lucky. I think in the in the injury department, they've only had, um, you know, some dings and nicks and scrapes. Uh, big injury news as of today is Eric Berry. I guess has been diagnosed with tendonitis in his left heel, um, which is concerning. Um, obviously, Eric Berry is is the the most talented or one of the most talented players on that on that uh, Chiefs defense. Um, And actually, speaking of defense, uh, we actually have with us right now live uh, former Kansas City Chiefs player and uh, friend of Chiefs Central Radio, Sean Smith. Uh, What's up, Sean? Can you hear us? Hey, what's going on, my man? All right, there he is, uh, live from Houston. You and the family back from Mexico, Sean? Yeah, we're back from Mexico. Enjoy. Nice. Enjoy had a nice little vacation. Enjoy the weather over there and the water. Excellent, very good, man. Glad to glad to have you on the show. Thanks for coming along. Um, we we'd like to have uh, Sean on with us, you know, off and on throughout the season. Kind of get a uh, a pro perspective. Uh, Sean Smith, uh, defensive lineman extraordinaire, played for the Chiefs for a couple years, played for the Tennessee Titans, also played for the Cincinnati Bengals um, at one point in time. So, uh, you know, definitely glad to have his expertise. So. Sean, right off the bat, I'm just going to ask you, um, you, have you gotten a chance to watch the the Chiefs' first preseason game? Yeah, I watched it. Um, I think defensively, we're going to be all right. Defensive line is going to be good. Linebackers, I think we got to see a little bit what the secondary is going to be like. Uh, Hopefully, uh, Sean Smith, the other Sean Smith, will keep playing good, continue to get better. You know, they got Parker in front of him trying to push him. I think that's more mentally. I think he'd probably end up being the starter. But it all depends. If Parker keeps having a strong camp, depends. Um, got to keep Eric Berry healthy. That's going to be the key. Gonna yeah, be- right Right before you jumped on, Sean, we were just saying Eric Berry was actually uh, – Coach Reed in his, in his post-practice uh, presser today actually said that he's got tendonitis in that left heel, um, which could be a real nagging injury. Uh, you got any experience with that kind of an injury at all? Nah, but I know some people that are had it. Basically, gonna have to you know stay off it a little bit, get the heel cups inserted inside his uh, cleat, or might even get some special cleats made per se. 
to help his feet from having the tendonitis, the heel. And I know uh, I think Brandon Flowers dealt with it a little bit back in 2010, I think, or 2011, one of them years. Yeah. Yeah, he had that kind of that nagging injury. Um, now you played you played on that uh, on that team with with Flowers, and you played with Holly. There's not a whole lot of guys left on this on this team that uh, that were there per, you know prior to to Dorsey and Reed. Um, obviously, Tom Holly is a big one. Um, Eric Berry drafted in 2010, which was your first year with the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, my first year, uh, 2010. Yeah. Under uh, under good old uh, Romeo Cornell, now uh, coaching the defense up down in Houston. So yes, uh, he is doing that. Rack is doing yeah, Rack, Rack City's back uh, back down in Houston. So you think the defensive line is going to be uh, going to be doing doing well? What's your thoughts? You know, kind of looking in the similarities because you played. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sean. You you played the the three and the five technique as a as a defensive lineman. Is that correct? Yeah, I played all three of them. The zero, the three. Because I played all three positions, it didn't matter. So what's your, what's your thoughts on uh, on Poe? I mean, is is this guy legit? Is he is he the real deal? Yes, I I've been thinking he's the real deal. Um, when I came back in 2012 and played, I seen him play. He has a you know everybody was talking about his motor. He has a motor thing and a big guy like this. You see. He's a good player. He made DJ an even better player. Having a big body up there, making plays, and also DJ feeding off of him, making plays. Yeah, he's a uh, you know obviously with this uh, Bob Sutton defense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, with this Bob Sutton defense, kind of uh, instead of you know when when Rack was uh, was coaching up that D, it was more of a you know, the defensive linemen suck up those blocks and allow the rushers to get in there. And, and with this attacking defense, it seems to be a lot more get everyone in as much as you can. Um, you know, and, and it's kind of a it's kind of a mode of, you know, you can't double-team everybody. And so... Uh, no, nah, watch- somebody's going to make a play. <laughs> oh, Houston... Ford, Bailey, uh, somebody's going to make a play. And that's yeah, the thing it's... about certain defense, you know, it's most was, now I don't want to say it, just sit and read, but the scheme is two different kind of schemes. There's two different ways you can run a 3 4. A few ways. Romeo's is not. He had the attack, but it's also a bunch of personnel too. Having guys, you know, in certain spots, whether it's your safety, uh, your corner, D lineman, it all depends. You know, another big thing people don't understand is a big surprise. No, I wouldn't even say a surprise is the play they're getting in the second day with Abdullah. You know, he's making plays for them. That's big for the defense. You know, that's always been the problem. Eric Berry's been good. Kendra Lou was good, but to have depth at the safety position and have a guy that can make plays is tremendous, especially after a guy sat out a whole year <laughs> of football and come back and, and play good football and then get a, a new contract. That says a lot about that guy himself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, you mentioned Kendrick Lewis. Obviously, one of the biggest disappointments in, in recent history for the Chiefs was them uh, dropping that, uh, you know, that huge lead in the wild card game in January. Uh, you know, are, looking at the Chiefs secondary thus far, you know, early on in the preseason, do you think we're looking at the same thing all over again? Uh, I wouldn't say that. It's just we're going to have to get make sure guys get back in cover for the big, for the big thing. And I mean, when you look at it, I think so they got to, you know, drop back, get in coverage. You know, you the safety, you the last guard of defense, so you have to be in the back, on the back end. In due time, I think they're still young back there and starting to mesh, you know what I mean? As they mesh together with three games, three preseason games left, everything should be all right. Let's hope. <laughs> let's hope. Oh, yeah, let's hope. I mean, we can hope, but I, I, think, I think they 
The biggest thing is we're going to have to see if Alex Smith is going to be able to produce what he did last year. We already know what Jamal Charles can do. As Jamal goes, the team goes. That's the way I look at it. Well, I think that's the way everybody looks at it. What's what's your thoughts on Alex Smith? You know, you've kind of been um, you, you've been you 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 have been critical of Matt Castle as a quarterback. Um, not not overly critical, but I mean, I've I've seen some stuff on Twitter and whatnot. What's your thoughts on Smith in regards to you know what kind of a quarterback he is? Well, I mean, a sad friend. At first, he was a bust, and then he lived his uh, career, and then he came to Kansas City <laughs> to sum it all up. <laughs> In two seconds, I mean, he wasn't doing good at San Fran in the beginning of his career. Then he came along and he got hurt and lost his job to, our, you know, Colin. Then he came to Kansas City and played, played good, but he also had weapons. You know, Jamal, even Dwayne Bowe. Um, even though with Jamal carrying most of the load, still, you know, I like the part with how Jamal also held out for Kemp for, well, he didn't hold out. He had a car problems, um, <laughs> <laughs> had car problems before <laughs> before Kemp started, but he was there on time and then he didn't miss anything. So that I mean that's that's a plus, you know. Yeah. Great, you know, great. The Chiefs to be good there. It's it's having the depth, the depth having depth. Um, you know who's gonna back Jamal up. Well, he's got a couple of guys that are on the roster. Uh, Nile Davis showed some spark last year and, and in the preseason so far this year. Um, obviously, this kid DeAnthony Thomas is is an X factor, and then yeah, even Cyrus Gray showed. He is a break for Cyrus battling Joe McKnight for the last running back spot, I believe. You know, when you look at it, yep. when you break it, when you break it down, it's all about who's going to play special teams and who can block. Who, you know what I mean? With Joe and Cyrus, uh, now Davis and Niles, Niles get pretty good, and then Thomas, he's the basically they got drafted him to be the decimal cluster. You know what I mean? Yeah. When, you look, when you look at it, and that kid, that kid got Jets. He can move. He made plays at Oregon in, in college, and I think he's one of those guys that's proven already in the preseason that he can take a kickback. <laughs> so yeah, no, he. Have. Yeah, we were just talking about it right before you called in, Chris and I were. Chris, uh, you got anything for for our friend here, Sean Smith? <clears throat> I just have the funner questions, not the technical stuff. You know, <laughs> I want to know. I want to know stuff like who who's the um, who's the toughest uh, offensive lineman you had to go against? Ever period. Ever, ever period. I say Larry Allen. Oh yeah. Yeah, that, that that punch is serious. <laughs> that first punch is serious. I love hearing the inside stuff like that just because, you know, you hear analysts talk about it, but it's a little bit different hearing it from players. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, you know, down in the trenches, it's, it's a war down there. Um, playing against the office linemen, going against 600 pounds plus every week, pretty much every Sunday, every day in practice. It's a wear and tear on your body on the toe, but I mean, there's a lot of grunt going down there. It's all about the low man women, whoever get the leverage, but there's guys poking in your eye, you know, doing all different types of stuff, pushing your helmet or trying to just antagonize you to do something dumb to retaliate. Yeah. And speaking of punches, I uh, had one question I had to really ask was... <laughs> <laughs> You know your boy, your boy Brady Quinn got a brought on to Miami today. Yeah. Uh, what what was the deal with that? And there was never really too much said about that. Uh, you know, I I don't talk about the past. I talk about the future and the present. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Well said, Sean. Well said. <laughs> congratulations, congratulations to the number twenty two pick of the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Uh, going to Miami, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's yeah. <laughs> with number 22 being the pick. But uh, it's just that he could get a job with Tim Tebow can. And who do you think has been, had a better career? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, no, it, you're, you're absolutely right, Sean. You're absolutely right. You know, I mean, not to – 
So uh, here's here's one for you. Um, I I know that you've played against Peyton Manning in your career. I, is he truly unbeatable? I mean, in the in the regular season, we know what a fallacy he is in the postseason. But in the regular season, is he is he unbeatable? Uh, no, he's he's beatable. I mean, we beat him before when I was playing for Cleveland. And what was that? Get him in the semi, but he is the greatest. Yeah. I, I, he's the GOAT. I remember that was my last game playing in Denver, playing against Denver when we got blown out the last game in 2012. And uh, I seen Peyton. It was a play I wasn't even in. I seen Peyton call a defense that we haven't ran since I don't know when. <laughs> and it wasn't even. And he checked it at the line of scrimmage, checked it the right. Bam, 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 bam. And I, when I seen that right there, I said, wow. man, you is the, he's the greatest. I forgot who I was talking to, but I was like, yes, he is the greatest. I mean, he's always been great. I played against him numerous times in my career when I played in Cincinnati, uh, Cleveland, um, Kansas City. So, it's, I mean, he's a great quarterback. He knows what he's doing back there as far as controlling the game. And get finding an open man and also making a no name receiver into somebody. You know, him and Tom Brady are good at that. It doesn't matter who's out yeah, there. Find a way to, they, they'll make somebody that's an average player into a great player. It's it's a true story. It's it's the you know the bane of the Chiefs' existence. So uh, as we uh, as we move into this preseason, Sean, you got any early? Uh, Early, early, early on predictions of of a of a Super Bowl matchup. Are you are you willing to go on record with an early Super Bowl prediction? My and and just to just to kind of lead off, mine is San Francisco, Indianapolis. That's my early prediction for the Super Bowl. Oh, Indy! I, I can see Indy making it to the AFC Championship game, but not to the Super Bowl. Not to the Super Bowl, but I'm not even sold on Denver all the way either. Though. I think it's up for yeah. grabs. I'm going to tell you who my surprise team is going to be. I got two surprise teams out of the AFC. The Jacksonville Jaguars and the San Diego Chargers. The Jags, huh? That's bold. Yeah. I, I, I said, I, I go back to, you go back to one of my tweets during the draft. I said, Jacksonville is going to be a good team, playoff team. Every year is two to three, two to four teams, I believe, that make it. I didn't make the playoffs the year before. I go to the playoffs in the mm-hmm. next year. Yeah, that's true. It's true. I mean, look at the Chiefs last year. Worst to first two and fourteen to eleven and five. It could happen. Yeah, but also the schedules. Tougher schedule. I mean, I'm be a realist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cut the BS, man. I'm gonna be a realist. I'm tell you, tough schedule. Hey, any Sunday, any given Sunday, you can win. Don't get me wrong, but. Tough schedule. It's hard. You got to be able to win on the road. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are you up to nowadays, Sean? You're not. You obviously you're not with the team right now. You you didn't play all last year. Um, what are you uh, besides hanging out with the fam in Mexico? What are you up to? <laughs> uh, right now I'm just chilling. Uh, I work up at the high school coaching football, volunteering my services over there, coaching the defense and learning about being a head coach of a football program. So just getting that out of the way. We started uh, two of days. Well, not, I wouldn't call it two days. Started practicing Monday. Started Monday was our first day of practice. Today was the second day, so tomorrow's the third day. Other than that, just enjoying life. Uh, my daughters, you know, they track season is over with now. So now it's one is in soccer and one is uh, uh, into gymnastics. It's gymnastics right now. That's about it, man. Just enjoying life and ready for the season to really actually kick off. <laughs> as as are we all. Is that a is that a four A school up there? Five A school? It's a five A. It's a five A. Five A. Okay, yeah. excellent. Very good. Well, Sean, obviously, with that, we wish you the best of luck. And uh, you know, if it's cool with you, we'd like to check in with you. You know, every every couple three weeks or so during the season and bring you on, especially once the regular season starts and really get a you know. Oh yeah, uh, most definitely. I mean. One time before it's out, and then I might try to make it a daily thing. I'll come off for a couple of minutes and talk, you no know, cheats about the day before, the game, the day after the game. See what happens. Yeah, for on. sure. Um, 
Yeah, good stuff. Well, Chris, Chris and I really appreciate your time, Sean. It's it's great having you on. You know, it's always you know cool for for guys like us to talk to a guy. I mean, you know, you were very well loved, I think, in Chiefs Kingdom. You know, uh, Sean Smith, Big Nasty, as you kind of earned that nickname. Um, <laughs> I, did you know that? Did you know that was your nickname, Big Nasty? Uh, I know people. I heard that before from a few people, actually. Then I got people calling me the deep freezes. I mean, hey, it doesn't matter. I mean, I I love to come out the run out the tunnel again in Chiefs Kingdom and, you know, play another down for the Chiefs. I loved it. You know, the fans was good, supporting me. And I, I mean, I had a good time in Kansas City. Well, and uh, I speak, I mean, I think for a lot of Chiefs Kingdom when I say we had a good time watching you. So, Sean, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight on Chief Central Radio, and uh, we'll be checking in with you here in a couple weeks, okay? All right, cool. Please have a good one. Uh, take care, partner. Yep. All right, good, uh, good friend of the show there, Sean Smith. Big, nasty, deep freeze from... Uh, uh, a couple years as a Chiefs player, also played, like we said, with Cincinnati, Cleveland, uh, and Tennessee. Um, yeah, good stuff, man. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, like I said, it's it's always exciting for me just being, you know, not even a Chiefs fan, but a football fan in general to talk to anybody who's ever, you know, I, I've been lucky throughout my life to talk to a few, and um, I'm always excited just to get people's takes on what it's like to actually play in the big show. Yeah, so it's got to uh, be just wild. Like you really probably can't even wrap your head around it as a normal yeah. person. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, you know, it's, it, it's got to be one of those things where, it, you, like you say, yeah, it's just nuts. It's like you don't even think about as a layman, like as a normal fan, what it's got to be like. You know, we can imagine what it's like sitting in the stands watching, watching the game or watching it on TV. But to be down on the field when seventy thousand people are screaming, you know. And it's easy. It's easy to sit on your couch and criticize and <laughs> you know mm -hmm. be like be like oh that piece of crap he hasn't even gone in and got the quarterback you know what i'm saying but you know to actually be down in the trenches and kind of see what it's like you know that's uh, i'm sure just wild yeah absolutely um well uh, before Sean called in you know we were kind of breaking down this uh this preseason game we talked about DeAnthony Thomas we talked about Travis Kelsey um and you had mentioned the O-line you know and it's a good transition talking to Sean who played on the other side of the ball talking about going up against the O-line but um you mentioned you know that they, they stuck together pretty well and I I think that I will agree with you um for a good part uh majority of it but uh uh you know there obviously were a couple of um instances where they weren't able to hold the defender out of the backfield and uh, Chiefs had a couple fumbles obviously the big one uh, as it pops up on my replay screen right here was Alex Smith in a very uncharacteristic fumble turnover uh, in the first quarter uh, I think during the Chiefs second series um, yeah, and then he really didn't have that ball tucked or something it just kind of popped right out yeah you know and it's funny if you go back and you watch the couple of plays preceding that um, Eric Fisher, who who's moving obviously from the right side to the left side, he was the number one overall pick last year, played right tackle. Now he's moving back to his quote unquote natural position, a left tackle, and he um, going up against uh, Gathers from uh, the Bengals, who's a pretty uh, pretty legit pass rusher in his own right. Um, and the the first play of the game, he put Gathers right on his back. I mean, Gathers watched the rest of the play, you know, literally looking up. Um, but that play, Gaither's just just get, did a quick little move on him and was able to get right past Fisher um, and and get to Smith and and cause that fumble. Um, and then of course later on in the game, you know, and it really, if you kind of count off the the count, um, you know, three four seconds is about all you're going to get as a quarterback to throw the ball, and and that was a long three seconds that Smith had that ball. So. I don't know. I mean, it's it's tough to put that on the offensive line, but um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna. I was just agreeing. I mean, it, you know, it, you gotta know at least what you're doing with it. it you kind of rewatch that play, and Smith looks a bit confused on what he's planning to do with it. He he did. He looked a little panicked. He, it looked to me like, and again, having watched this game ad, ad nauseum, it looked like he he went to three reads. Um, you know, quickly and just kind of panicked a little bit, and then you know, like you like you said, Chris didn't have the ball quite tucked away. 
um, and uh, you know got it got it poked out from behind. So, um, and then of course Tyler Bray, same situation. You know, um, he's a kid trying. I, I think trying to make this roster. Sure. Um, you know, th th there's no guarantees that he's got a spot on this 53-man roster and trying to an extend a play. And uh, that one was tough. If you remember, the play before, he stepped up in the pocket, pulled away from a potential sack, and, and hit uh, Demetrius Harris for a long, like, 30-plus yard strike down the field. You know, yeah. and then the very next play, fumbles it and loses the ball. So, um, but... You know the the O line did show some promise. Guys like uh, Zach Fulton and uh, uh, this this kid that they're talking about now, Ricky Henry. Have you seen the latest on him? Andy Reid says he looks like Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so there, I mean, there is promise there. Um, there is promise there, but uh, it, you know, with it with any unit on the team, and I think O line probably especially. You know, you've got to really, really, really have that time to gel together, and they need to figure out who their starting five are going to be, so they can really have those guys kind of, kind of glom onto each other. So, um, but uh, you know, moving forward from that, and actually flipping over to the defensive side of the ball, you know, you mentioned the secondary. Uh, what were your thoughts on them? You know, I I was I was pleasantly surprised. I mean. Right off the bat, it kind of made me sick a little bit seeing Dalton hit AJ deep, just because I know that that's always been a big weak point for us is that deep ball. And, um, and you know, I'm hoping they, I mean, they realize that that's an issue and that they're working on that. But I think overall everybody looked decent. You know, I, I think obviously the interceptions are, you know. That's something that's going to have to be Chiefs football. If we're going to want to win games, we're going to have to do like we did in that first preseason game and have the interceptions, have the special teams touchdowns and stuff like that. I mean, when we could put together three non-offensive touchdowns in that game, it's hard not to win a game when you do that. Yeah, absolutely. You look at that final score, 41-39. to If you take away the three Chiefs non-offensive touchdowns, they lose that game by 19 points. Yeah. You know, um... You, you, you put those in, and, and, and they win by two. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and that was kind of the story, uh, you know, the, the way it was last year as well. Um, you know, there, there were games, I'm thinking specifically of the Buffalo game um, and, and maybe even the, the Philly game week three, where had they not had the contributions from defense, they wouldn't have won those games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's, that's, that's the difference between being 11 and 5 and 9 and 7. Um, so, you know, and not a playoff team, you know, to that end. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think you're right. I think that they're going to have to be very opportunistic um, with those turnovers. But the the two, obviously, we talked about the the, the uh, DeAnthony Thomas. By the way, my fantasy team, I changed his name. It is now Dat-a-boy. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it, but, yeah, you look at those two interception returns, the pick sixes, you know, the first one, which was really cool because it came literally the next play, the next offensive play the Bengals ran after Thomas ran that touchdown back. Um, and that's just Sean Smith doing the, the other Sean Smith, the cornerback Sean Smith, not Sean Smith that was just on the show. But uh, <laughs> that's just him doing what he does and, uh, you know, wrestling the ball away from a, from a wide receiver and, and pretty much having an open uh, – an open shot to the end zone. Now, the other one, the Malcolm Bronson touchdown, um, I wanted to touch on that one really quick because that one, to me, was even better than the Smith because that really showed some football IQ because if you notice that play, he read and anticipated that play all the way. I mean, that one was really a great football move where he jumped that route. Oh yeah, and you know that's the stuff you got to look to see. You know, you can be an absolute average cornerback and still get a pick six because it's thrown right to you. You know, but you know if you have that sensibility to follow a quarterback's eyes, read a route, and you know take it to the house, then that's when you start to become something special. Yeah, and you know it's funny to me. There's always there's always a couple 
undrafted free agents that raise some eyebrows, usually this time of year especially when they're really getting a lot of playing time because of the way the preseason is designed. But, you know, obviously talking about Malcolm Bronson, I mean, this kid has a legitimate shot to be something on this team. I mean, I, I think that the, the starting free safety spot is going to clearly belong to Hussein Abdullah, but I, I think Malcolm Bronson really, really has a shot to be something on this team, especially when they start moving into these sub-packages. Yeah, you know, especially for someone who was off my radar. You know, I mean, he, he looked good. There's a couple guys who I was really impressed with, you know, a couple guys who were kind of off my radar as far as being people who I thought weren't, you know, really going to make the team and performed really well. Um, freaking Albert Wilson. Um, you know, he was one of those guys that I figured was probably on the cuff for, you know, wide receiver. And I'll tell you what, man, that kid caught absolutely everything that was thrown in his general direction. And it, it, it impressed me. I'd give him a spot. Yeah, uh, you know, in the in the off season, everybody talked about Wes and Dressler, this kid from Canada that they brought in. And as it looks right now, I don't even think he's going to make the roster. I don't even think he's close to making the roster. I think this Albert Wilson kid who comes in as an undrafted free agent, you know, and he's a small kid. He's 5'9". Um, I think, and, and I tweeted this out earlier this week, I think he is what everybody hoped Wes and Dressler was going to be. Yeah. And you're not kidding. Mm -hmm. The special team side of things doesn't hurt either. Yeah, absolutely. A guy that can that can return kicks like that? No, I mean that that's just going to guarantee him, you know, a solid spot on this roster. But you know, you put a kid like that in the slaughter lineup with a double slot with him on one side and and the black mamba on the other. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. But yeah, what impressed me really really impressed me about him, and you just said it, Chris, was the fact that he caught everything that they threw in his direction that. You know, and that's obviously been a, a huge concern for the Chiefs. Uh, you know, in years past, is the the ability for their receivers to actually hang on to the ball. Um, you know, and and it wasn't just in this preseason game. He has been consistent. You know, all the reports coming out of training camp in St. Joe have shown that uh, Albert Wilson has yeah. has been a yeah. very consistent, uh, very very consistent player um, in that. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, the other big one that I felt needs to be touched on just because I was so impressed by his performance and he was somebody that was completely off my radar was uh, James Michael Johnson. Yeah. Um, you know, go ahead. Absolutely talk about him because he, he, he warrants talking about. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even have a follow-up to it besides I was I, – I watched him and every single, you know, time, uh, you know, defensive tackle was happening – if he wasn't the one tackling the person with the ball, he was standing right next to him there in on it. So, um, you know, to have that kind of depth, you know, is going to be huge for us. Uh, and linebacker is a position that you need depth at, and if we can have the talent that we already have there and then have backup players who can come in and be that run stop and, you know, do that tackling in place of them, that's just huge. Well, you know, you said if he, talking about tackling, he he led the team in tackles for that game. He had eight tackles, um, and he didn't even come close to being the the guy that was on the field the most. Actually, the guy that ended up with the most snaps for the entire game was uh, was rookie pass rusher D Ford. Yep, um, who 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 did played well. I mean, he he put some pressure on the quarterback. Didn't actually get a sack. Had a couple that he had him in his hands, but, uh, um, no, James Michael Johnson, man, this guy, this guy's legit. I, I, I think at that middle linebacker position, I think Joe Mays is going to get the start next to Derek Johnson just because of the scheme that they're running. But I think that this J. Michael Johnson guy comes in on, on passing downs. Definitely. He, he can really play well in coverage. The one play in particular that I'm thinking of, um, was the play that set up the DeAnthony Thomas punt return was the screen pass on third and long. Yeah, where he, amazing. yeah, he 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 split the two defenders that were supposed to block on that screenplay, and mm. blew up the law firm Ben Jarvis Green Ellis before the ball. I mean, right as the ball got to him, not before. I mean, just timed it perfectly so he didn't get the flag thrown. You know, and and uh, just a great play, great heads up play. Diagnosed it, broke it down, and and went in and and uh, you know did did what needed to be done. So, um, 
Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, you're spot on with that one. He is definitely somebody that needs to, uh, will, will hopefully continues to play at a good, at a high level and, and gets a spot on this roster. Um, you know, the, like I said, the secondary, you know, the, I think they're going to need some help. The the linebacking core, D Ford. I mean, did you like what you saw from D Ford? Is he ads advertised? Do you think? Yeah, I, I'm glad they gave him some downs. You know, take the kid. You know, get him in there. Get him. Use the preseason, you know, who cares if he gets the sacks and stuff like that. Of course, you'd like to see him, but get him accustomed to the level of offensive linemen that he's going to be dealing with. Yeah. You know, the more he knows and the more um, variables that he understands by the time the season hits, I mean, you know, we're not, we're not needing him to come in and be, um, you know, that, that, that spot right away. You know, he has time to kind of develop in there and learn some of that you know we're not needing him to come in and be a starting threat right away so you know if he can develop and kind of play it out and figure out how to use his skill set against these offensive linemen you know the higher ability offensive linemen in the NFL then that's what we need I, I like getting the kids some time in the box like they did yeah, absolutely. I like I said, I thought he played well going back watching his snap specifically. Um, you know, they, everybody talks about that first step, and he does. He's got a wicked first step coming off the snap of that ball. But um, we didn't see it in this preseason game. Although there have been reports out of camp that they're starting to install what the defense is calling the dog front, and this is a defensive package where there's one down lineman, which is Poe and four outside linebackers. So you're putting Justin Houston, Tom Bahali, D. Ford, and then um, reserve uh, linebacker Josh Martin out on the field all together at the same time uh, in, a, in an obvious passing down to rush the passer. Now, that's something that I can uh, <laughs> I could wrap my head around, um, you know, and, and can't wait to see, you know, what it looks like. And, and from as I understand the way it's set up is Tomba and Ford on the outside, uh, Houston and Martin kicked in, and everybody just going, going all out for the quarterback. Uh, Pittsburgh used to run a pack. I mean, you know, a really similar deal with that, where um, they they have nobody like down in you know a stance, and they would just move around positions and rush in. Like they they would have a similar setup like that. And you know, when you have that kind of pass rush, and you know it's like you know you have a third and long situation, then the quarterback knows he's only going to have those three seconds to get that ball out. Yeah, exactly. And if, if your secondary does what they're supposed to do and jam those receivers on the outside, you know, you got a good shot at getting to that quarterback. So, um, yeah, overall, I mean, you know, I got to give, I think preseason game one, if we're going to put a grade on it, I'm going to give it a B. Um, I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from the quarterbacks, maybe a B minus. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from our quarterbacks. Um, you know, obviously the turnovers, Chase Daniel had the interception, and then, of course, uh, Smith and Bray both had fumbles that were lost. Um, but uh, you can't, um, you know, you, you can't look past the good that, that was shown on the field. The secondary needs to tighten some things up. But I think for preseason game number one, uh, overall not too bad of an outing. Yeah, no, not bad at all. Like I said before, the thing that it showed that we have that has always been a weakness as ours is the big playability, you know, and we've had that in the preseason. We need, you know, those 70-yard touchdowns. Like, you just don't see that. You know, a lot of our scores last year were offensively were from the long drives, and, you know, when we can put some of that together, then that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, moving forward, you know, the, putting that one in the rear view mirror, preseason week one is over with. Looking forward to preseason week two. As I said at the start of the show, uh, the Chiefs actually have a preseason game in primetime this week. Uh, Sunday evening at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, uh, 6 uh, Mountain and 5 Pacific on Fox Live uh, as the Chiefs will travel to uh, the Carolina Panthers and meet them face to face. I think Cam Newton might actually be starting this game, um, which would be a good test for the Chiefs. I think having a strong quarterback in Cam Newton, um, you know, who can run and throw, um, and, he likes uh, to hold on to the ball. You know, yeah. Cam Newton's never been known for his, you know, quick release. So, um, you know, so a guy like that who likes to hold on to the ball for a bit, you know, I'd like to see if we get after him on the pass rush a little bit more. 
Yeah, no, that's actually a great point. You know, it, not only just the quick release of to his receivers, but throwing the ball away when when he sees a play is not there. You know, he's definitely a guy that that likes to try to, you know, kind of a Ben Roethlisberger type in that respect that likes to try to extend a play with his feet, move around in the pocket, move out of the pocket, um, you know, to try to find somebody open, which can, can be a blessing and a curse, um, you know, because if if our secondary can't hold and he can find somebody open, but um, I, I guess the hope there is that, you know, the defense, uh, our defensive pass rush will be able to get to him. So that should be interesting. Also interesting news in regards to this game coming out of camp uh, either today or yesterday, I believe it was today, is uh, the fact that Alex Smith will be playing the entire first half of that game, um, which seems to be kind of Andy Reid's M.O. Uh, to give his uh, starting quarterback the first half and then uh, as well as I think most of the starters um, but I would like to see some of these younger uh, receivers uh, get some time with some of the starting, you know, with the starting quarterback to see what they can do. I want to see an Alex Smith, Albert Wilson hookup. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. Yeah, you know, uh, I think Alex Smith is probably uh, <laughs> drooling at the bit a little bit to go out there and show what he can do, and that this will hopefully be his chance. You know, those Carolina Panthers, their defense has always been pretty strong, so you know, it's a good chance for him to show up and, you know, if they play their starters at least for the first couple um, series of downs, then, you know, at least we might get to see something that would resemble what, you know, an actual start of the season might look like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and I think that's what people want to see. They really want to see, you know, you with preseason, you just got to be so careful because you want to balance that, you know, you don't want an injury, but you, you want to get everybody on tape and, and, um, you know, I think that's – and, you know, you said Alex Smith is chomping at the bit, and I, I think you can kind of see that in his uh, post-game presser after the uh, the Cincinnati Bengals game. You know, he talked about the fumble. He said, look, it was my fault. I held onto the ball too long. We're not putting that on the offensive line. You know, we just – the quarterbacks need to get better. I think he said it during his in-game interview that, uh, you know, the same thing. So he he knows. I mean, he knows that what, what the expectation is, um, you know, in that. So – Still no word on his contract. Uh, I guess he did an interview with USA Today saying that he's not looking for something along the lines of the Kaepernick, Andy Dalton, you know, type contract. The the quote unquote pay as you go. He wants a, you know, he wants a reasonable contract for what he thinks he's worth, and he wants one that's gonna, you know, give him the most guaranteed money that he's actually gonna be able to play all the way through, and not not one that's really a two year contract disguised as a six year contract. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see how that, you know, how that plays out moving forward. So. Yeah, well, it's interesting for me, too. You know, we talked about the cornerbacks and the secondary, and, uh, you know, I, I think this will also be a good test for them just because if we can't do well against Carolina Panthers' wide receiving core, we're in trouble against just about everybody else's because they have a lot of inexperience, a lot of, you know, all new guys there. You know, no one really knows the system well. Um, they're running with the whole brand new set there. So I, I mean, if we can't put up good numbers defensively against them, we're definitely going to be in trouble when we're you know playing people like Denver. No, you're absolutely right. That's actually an excellent point. I, I think at one point there was not a single Carolina Panther receiver during the off season that had caught a pass from Cam Newton the pri the you know last year. Um, they literally retooled their entire receiving core. And I actually have the pregame stuff pulled up here. And what's what I'm finding interesting is looking at Cam Newton and Alex Smith's numbers, they're almost identical from last year. Um, Cam Newton went uh, 292 on 473 attempts for 3379 yards and 24 touchdowns. Smith was 308 for 508, 3313 and 23 touchdowns in one last game. So very similar quarterbacks. Um, I, I think that the the Chiefs offense is going to find a good test against that Carolina stout defense. I mean, they've got some great defensive players there in Carolina. And then like like you just said, Chris, I think that uh, you know, our defense if it, hopefully they have an opportunity to shine against these wide receivers. I think that's a great way to put it. Yeah, it'll you know, it'll go to show the level that they're at, you know. If we struggle against those guys, then you know, it, it might be looking like it's going to be a rough spot. But, um, you know, hopefully it gives them a chance, you know, to get some wind underneath their wings and uh, show what they can do. 
Really, Bette Midler, some wind underneath their wings. <laughs> it's just the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> Did you ever know that you're my hero? Yes, of course. You're everything that I would like to be. <laughs> All right. It's getting late. I've had a couple of uh, a couple too many uh, Texas Shiner box, I think. So uh, I think that's where <laughs> I think that's where we're going to call it at night. Want to give a big thank you to uh, to our friend Sean Smith for calling in. Uh, definitely looking forward to having him uh, back on the show throughout the year and getting that uh, that pro perspective uh, from Mr. Smith as the season progresses. Um, definitely want to thank you all for listening. Uh, Chris and I enjoy doing this show as much, hopefully, as you enjoy listening to it. Uh, if you are listening on Stitcher, make sure that you uh, you give us a good review, give us a thumbs up on that site. Uh, same thing with iTunes. If you're an iTunes subscriber, make sure you are giving us a, a review and uh, giving us a, a five-star uh, type uh, type look there as well. And then, of course, if you're just listening to us right off of our home uh, home homepage there at profootballcentral.com, uh, we appreciate that very much as well. Uh, looking forward to uh, watching the Chiefs play the Carolina Panthers this Sunday uh, live on Fox, uh, eight Eastern, six or sorry, five Pacific. Um, so make sure you check that out. Chris and I will be breaking it all down for you next week. For my good friend Chris Kilduff up in the Pacific Northwest, I'm Jason Seibel down in San Antonio, Texas, telling you keep it red, keep it yellow, 